What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best Justice League episodes. Am I blue? Am I blue? For this list, we'll be looking over the greatest episodes from what many consider to be the greatest animated superhero series of all time. Did we gloss over a DC gem of an episode? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, be on the lookout for a few super powered spoilers ahead. Number 20, Secret Origins. What better way to start than at the beginning? I am John Jones. And don't take it personally, John. He doesn't trust anyone. A wise policy. When a collective of parasitic aliens launch their attack on Earth, Batman and Superman find themselves teaming up with some fellow costume crusaders, including the likes of Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash, Hawk Girl, and Martian Manhunter. Help has arrived. The battles against the Imperium are certainly fun, but what really sets fans' minds ablaze was the integral moment the world's greatest heroes decided to form their own team to better protect the planet. Hey, this was a big deal back in the day. Working together, we saved the planet. And I believe that if we stayed together as a team, we would be a force that could truly work for the ideals of peace and justice. What, like a bunch of super friends? More like a... Justice League. Number 19, Comfort and Joy. Now for something wholesome and lighthearted. A series of vignettes that display how the members of the Justice League choose to spend Christmas, each is more heartwarming than last. The Flash speeds across the world to get toys for an orphanage, even enlisting the help of the Ultra Humanite at one point. <laughs> that actually is pretty cool. Okay, DJ Rubba Ducky it is. Superman shows Martian Manhunter the joys of the season by having him spend Christmas in Smallville. And he said he didn't bring a gift. Whereas Green Lantern and Hawk Girl celebrate by getting into an alien bar room brawl. Okay, that last one might be a tad excessive, but it's the thought that counts. Isn't it great? Much better than a snowball fight. Oh, much! <laughs> Number 18, Kid Stuff. Leave it to the Justice League to take a premise that should, at its best, be boring and at its worst, downright irritating, and turn it into a macabre magical journey that even succeeds in splashing some great humor. A burst of childish rebellion leads Mordred to defy his sorceress mother and removes adults from the world. In order to counter this, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Green Lantern are turned into kids and have to go about stopping the pint-sized conjurer with substantially reduced powers. This better be temporary. On one side, you've got the adorable interactions between Bat Boy and Wonder Girl. I'll go with Bruce and John can go with Clark. Whatever. Then on the other, you've got Mordred's horrendous fate for going against Mother Dearest. Yikes. Well, don't you worry, baby. Mommy's going to take good care of you from now on. Number 17, Legends. Both a gripping Elseworld mystery, along with a touching tribute to industry legend Gardner Fox, who co-created the Justice League and Justice Society of America. Allow us to introduce ourselves. Justice Guild, roll call. Catman. Black Siren. Green Guardsman. Tom Turbine. The Streak. Teleported to a picturesque world, Green Lantern and company encounter heroes straight out of the silver and golden age of comics. I know it sounds corny, but those comics taught me what it meant to be a hero. Naturally, not everything is as happy-go-lucky as it seems, and soon it's revealed that this world of yesteryear is nothing more than a grim illusion brought about by suffering and trauma. Goes to show that despite their corny exterior, the classics of the genre can still hit just as hard as they did back then.
No. Number 16, the greatest story never told. Good old Booster Gold, always ready to help, even when it's not necessarily wanted. Can I have your autograph? Of course you can. I thought you were Green Lantern. While the rest of the Justice League deals with an actual threat, the fame chaser from the future is relegated to crowd control. At least until he stumbles onto a new danger that can threaten everyone and everything. And he's the only one available to handle it. How do we turn your artificial black hole off? For those who didn't know what Booster was all about, this was a great introduction to his character. A lovable buffoon who has to learn that being a hero isn't about the spotlight. For the last time, I am not Green Lantern. My name is... <laughs> Just kidding. I know who Booster Gold is. Number 15, Clash. It's well established that Lex Luthor's greatest weapon is his mind. And nowhere is that better displayed than in his manipulation of both the public and Superman himself. Superman, you're needed. I'm in the middle of something, can it wait? As his popularity in the political field rises, especially due to his endorsement of the powerful but naive Captain Marvel, Superman becomes more and more convinced that he's up to no good. When you joined this team, you became something more than just a hero. I know that, sir, but you became a symbol, a symbol that represents all of us. Things turn violent when Luther tricks the Man of Steel into thinking he's planted a bomb only for Captain Marvel to step in. Captain, please, there has to be another way. The brawl itself is quite the spectacle, though the most painful blow of all is the reveal the whole thing was orchestrated by Luther to increase the distrust between the world and the Justice League. Well, it uh, seems to be exactly what Luthor said it was. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't. If anyone should apologize, Superman, it's me. Number 14, Patriot Act. Justice League excels at a lot of things, and that includes episodes and stories that veer away from the main seven to focus on lesser known heroes. And this is one of their best. I'd slay the ogre Blunderbore all over again, rather than put myself on display in this manner, even though that ogre turned out to be Morgan Le Fay. We've all heard it. This is a good story. When long-running anti-meta-human General Eileen injects himself with a serum that turns him into a rampaging monster, it falls to Green Arrow to lead the group of lesser-known heroes such as Shining Knight and Vigilante to take down the hypocritical before his rampage goes too far. I'm here to protect them from you. And yes, that is J.K. Simmons voicing Eileen. All right, I've become what I hate. I'll give you that. But in the long run, you'll see I was right. You'll see you need the likes of me to protect you from them. Number 13, Double Date. Not the kind of date night one might expect. You were warned. You were told to stay away from Mandragora. You have violated my direct orders. You've crossed the line. The Huntress, a recently exiled member of the League, finds herself in pursuit of the man who murdered her parents and recruits the question to help her. Did you come here just to make fun of my work? No, Q. I came to help you. And let's just keep the rest of the League out of it, shall we? Standing in their way are Green Arrow and Black Canary, who are on a mission to defend her target at all costs. While the action is thrilling, what steals the show is how each pairing's romance blooms. I don't get it. Why aren't we on our way to the train station? Shh. Because I know when I'm being conned. You're cute when you're in insufferable smarty pants. Arrow and Canary are now openly acknowledging their affection for each other, while bizarrely enough, even someone as eccentric as the question earns Huntress's adoration. Pretty smooth for a guy without a face. Where are we going? Don't ask so many questions. Number 12, the once and future thing. Who's ready for the obligatory time travel episode? Anybody? Anybody? This two-parter was a thrill from start to finish, given that it not only saw members of the League travel back to the days of the Wild West, but also into a future filled with cameos. 
Static? What's going on? Dead? As time traveling loser Kronos wreaks havoc along the timeline, Batman and company not only team up with the likes of Jonah Hex and Static, but also Batman Beyond in order to set things back in their place. There is nothing more meta than seeing old Bruce Wayne meet Batman. Surprised to see me? A little. I'm more surprised that I lived so long. Batman, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, Batman. Or have you met? Not now. Number 11, The Great Brain Robbery. The idea behind this episode had potential for just as many laughs as it did thrills, and it certainly delivered on both. Both Lex Luthor and the League are after knowledge that Grodd has, and so both attempt to enter his mind via science and sorcery. <laughs> The result is Luther and Flash switching bodies, leading to chaos on both ends. Flash has to avoid raising suspicion around a group of volatile supervillains, while everyone aboard the Watchtower has to deal with a super fast Luthor. On an interesting note, The Flash's voice actor Michael Rosenbaum also portrayed Lex Luthor on Smallville. No wonder he could pull off the dual personality so well. Lex, you're having a difficult day. Hmm, if nothing else, I can at least learn The Flash's secret identity. I have no idea who this is. Number 10, Wild Cards. Ah, ah, ah. Don't touch that remote. I know it's heartbreaking to have your favorite shows preempted, but look what you're getting instead. For those of you that felt like that the Teen Titans and the Justice League should have teamed up during the series run, this is as close as it gets. The voices behind the Titans lent their talents to the infamous Royal Flush Gang, a group hired by the Joker to battle the League. I like your style. Joker's a class act. Don't get me wrong. These guys give good backup, but they don't call me king for nothing. Not only do we get the cast of Teen Titans, we also get some classic Batman and Joker moments. Oh dear, it looks like they're not going to stop the bomb after all. Wait! Him again. It's always him. Time for more of that mindless violence I was talking about, kiddies! The Dark Knight shows how good at multitasking he is by telling Flash how to disarm a bomb while taking a punch. All the while, the Joker pulls off one of his greatest gags with the audience themselves. This whole thing was a stunt to get as many of you watching as possible. And it worked! My royal flush gang provided the conflict, the Justice League brought the star power. And I brought the shocking surprise ending. Oh, and Green Lantern and Hawk Girl totally hook up. Bow chicka wow wow. Number 9, This Little Piggy. Batman and Wonder Woman's blossoming romance was always one of Justice League's most interesting subplots, and here, it's given the attention it deserves. Maybe with someone special. No, no dating for the Batman. It might cut into your brooding time. One, dating within the team always leads to disaster. After Diana is turned into a pig, it falls to Batman and Zatanna to try to reverse the magic however they can. It's certainly a more lighthearted venture, though undoubtedly the highlight is the ending, where the wicked sorceress who cursed Diana promises to reverse it if Batman surrenders a great secret. What is the secret? The fact that Batman can sing like a champion. Am I blue? Ain't these tears in my eyes telling you? It's so out of nowhere and yet shockingly fits. The world's greatest detective truly is a man of many talents, and it's just another reason we miss Kevin Conroy. Mm -hmm. Number eight, Hereafter. What would happen if Superman were to die? After supposedly being vaporized, the Justice League mourns the death of their most valued member. Without Superman, can there be a Justice League? Our coverage of the death of Superman will continue. 
I must admit, I'm also concerned about the league's future. Heck, even Lex Luthor is sad he's gone. We get an especially touching scene with Batman as he says goodbye in his own way, showing just how much he respected him. Despite our differences, I have nothing but respect for you. I hope you knew, know that. Of course, not all is as it seems, as Superman has actually been sent 30,000 years into the future. Now, without his powers due to an absence of a yellow sun, he has to find a way back to his own time and prevent such a dismal end. The icing on the cake? We get an appearance by the main man himself, Lobo. Hey, head here! What a piece of me! Number 7, Injustice for All. It was only a matter of time before a supervillain team that rivaled the Justice League assembled itself. And wouldn't you know it? Lex Luthor would be leading the charge. Cheetah, Sapphire, Grundy, glad you could make it. And of course you all know the Ultra Humanite. Charmed, I'm sure. Cut the courtesies, Luthor. What do you want? After being diagnosed with cancer due to his constant exposure to kryptonite, Luthor decides he wants to take down the league with what little time he has left. You're crazy. And what's wrong with that? It's done wonders for me. Get out of here. Oh, Lexi, I'm hurt. Recruiting the likes of Joker to help enact his plan, he kidnaps Batman and plots to destroy the Watchtower with the rest of the heroes inside. There's a surprise hidden in your little clubhouse. And once your chums get there, kablooey! Popcorn? What follows is not only a series of great hero versus villain battles, but we also get some classic Batman moments. Turns out, the Dark Knight is quite the seducer. Maybe I like danger. Do you? Try me. <laughs> Number 6, Epilogue. Something of an official ending to the DC animated universe's Batman, fans adore this episode for two reasons. Terry McGinnis, or do you prefer being called Batman? On the one hand, you've got the return of Terry McGinnis, aka Batman Beyond, who comes into conflict when he discovers his true heritage, though ultimately chooses to wear the cow as the second knight. Just like my old man. The other reason it's so beloved is the flashback scene between Batman and Ace, who chooses to stay by her side instead of subduing her despite her immense psychic abilities. Could you stay with me? I'm scared. It's depressing as can be, but it also displays that beneath all that darkness, Batman's humanity is unshakable. Number 5, A Better World. There have been plenty of depictions of DC's heroes turning to the dark side, but few carry more weight as the Justice Lord. In a future following the death of Flash, Superman and his fellow metahumans pursue complete domination of the planet after he murders President Lex Luthor. I did love being a hero. But if this is where it leads, I'm done with it. What's next? Take over another reality, of course. You grabbed power, and with that power, we've made a world where no eight-year-old boy will ever lose his parents because of some punk with a gun. This soon leads to the League taking on the Lords in a battle of ideals and fists. Can't do it, can you? I'm the last piece of your conscience, and this is the one thing you'll never do. I've done a lot of things I thought I'd never do these last two years. One more won't hurt. Will the world's greatest superheroes have to confront the truth that they're just fallible to moral failings as the rest of us? So you're not such a Boy Scout after all. Never even made it to my first merit badge. Number 4, Divided We Fall. The culmination of the Cadmus arc, the Justice League are just pushed to their limits both physically and morally during their final clash with Luthor, who was revealed to have had Brainiac living inside him all this time. I hoped to remain hidden until I could install myself into the android, but you forced my hand, Brainiac. With Luthor's wicked mind combined with Brainiac's advanced technology, the League finds themselves in an uphill battle against not only the fusion of their two most nefarious foes, but also replicas of Justice Lords. No, no, no. We can do better than that. They 
Thankfully, the Flash comes in clutch to save the day by tapping into the Speed Force and bringing an end to the battle in the blink of an eye. And this is why we love Wally West. I can never go that fast again. Number three, Starcrossed. What can we say? Justice League knows how to nail season finales. After assisting the League in battle, Hawk Girl's people, the Thanagarians, arrive on Earth and offer their help against an incoming alien threat that seeks to conquer Earth. With your limited technology, you are totally unprepared for what is about to come. The greatest evil in the universe. Our mortal enemies, the Gordanians. This turns out to be nothing more than a ruse for a total planetary domination, one that actually succeeds. Now fugitives, the Justice League have to fight against an entire empire. All the while, Hawk Girl is torn between her allegiance to her people and to the League, including her newfound love with Green Lantern. It was for your own good. You've got to trust me. Why? Whose side are you really on? Don't you know? To say this was a game changer that would have a radical impact on the series going forward is a colossal understatement. I hope you're pleased with yourself. It'll take years for us to rebuild elsewhere. Then you'd better get started. Number two, Destroyer. No one can say the Justice League didn't go out with a bang, as this final episode gave us everything we could want. With the return of Darkseid and his armies, it takes both heroes and villains alike to stop him. Let's be clear about this. We're not here to help you save the world. You're here to help me get revenge on Darkseid. When this is over, it's back to business as usual wouldn't have it any other way. Every member of the League gets a chance to shine here, such as Batman, even under threat of annihilation, refuses to compromise his principles. Problem? I'm out. Take my extra. Not my style. However, the highlight has to be Superman and his final duel with Darkseid. Not only do we get one of his greatest speeches that defines his character perfectly, but we also get the mother of all punches along with it. What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose and show you just how powerful I really am. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. For the man who has everything. It may not have the most bombastic action, but if there ever was an episode that fully captured the essence of Trinity, it's this one. He's not the easiest person in the world to buy birthday presents for. Bruce, you didn't get him a gift certificate. No. Cash. Taking a story penned by the legendary Alan Moore, what starts as a simple birthday visit to the Fortress of Solitude takes a dark turn when Batman and Wonder Woman discovers Mongol has infected Superman with a plant that traps him in an illusion built on his heart's greatest desire. The Black Mercy is a telepathic species. It reads the heart's desire and feeds the individual a totally convincing simulation of it. So he's dreaming. Oh, far deeper than any dream. I wonder where he thinks he is. The camaraderie and bond between all three of DC's greatest heroes is beautifully explored, as each rises above not only a powerful enemy, but their own selfish wants to do what's right. This is everything I ever wanted in a life. But I've got responsibilities, Van. And I have to go now. No one bests the big three. I promise you. I'll never forget. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.